What you're watching right now are a couple of examples of animated GIFs or GIFs I've created for clients. First is Rob Gronkowski laying the absolute smackdown on that sled. Second is Ryan Blaney for the sports drink company, Body Armor. And these last couple are some really fun animations we did with the South Carolina basketball team. Okay, before I dive headfirst into this, I just thought I would disclose why or how I thought to make this video in the first place. Well, if you watched my previous video, which I'll link here, where I've interviewed a creative director at an ad, ad agency, one of the things he said that helps photographers separate themselves from their competition is when they can offer more than just a still image. These simple animations are one way to do just that. With all the different avenues out there for companies to market their products, they are always looking for creative ways to get the most out of photo shoots. Providing some animation for their social media platforms like Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and now TikTok could be the difference in landing or not landing a job. Now, there are many different ways to approach both filming these with your camera and then producing them on your computer. I'm not here to say one is better than the other or you have to do it a certain way, but I can show you my approach and how I usually go about creating them. If any of you out there have some tips and tricks to streamline or enhance the process, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Now going back, and if you look at those examples I showed a minute earlier, the Gronk sequence along with the basketball dunks were similar in the fact that I was shooting the action as it happened and I was positioned where I could capture all the action as it unfolded. The body armor piece was a scripted action sequence where we did an initial walkthrough, scripted the action, and then I did some zooming into frame and post. The final example was something I didn't plan during the shoot and instead put it together after the fact. Now it works, but if I had planned it before or even while I was shooting, I could have done a few things that would have made it a lot better. And since I'm talking about that one, let's just take a look at it real quickly on the computer. All right, you can see I've got all these files already pulled into uh, Adobe Bridge. And if I scroll through the thumbnails, you can see the an animation starting to take place up here in this top frame. Now, an animation like this, I would call maybe a kind of a moving portrait. Their motion kind of naturally uh, loops. I feel that kind of pulls this uh, illusion off better than the alternative. So what I did, since I didn't plan on making these animations during the shoot, I had to go find a couple frames that would help close the loop. So if you look at the frame numbers down here, these two frame numbers don't, they weren't shot in sequence. So what I did is I wanted to use this frame as my starting point where the ball is in his right hand. And you, know, you see he passes it back and forth and he brings it here to the middle, kind of rolls it around. And so I needed to get that ball back into his right hand or starting back into his right hand. So what I ended up doing is finding two files where he made that motion back to the right hand. And so it kind of gives you the feel that this is all one seamless action. Now another problem I will have since I wasn't shooting on a tripod or I, I wasn't even really planning on using these as an animation at the time of the shoot, you can see he's moving around in the frame because I wasn't holding the camera as steady as possible and like I said I wasn't on a tripod. So Photoshop has a tool that will help solve that for us and I'll show, let's, let's jump into Photoshop and get right to it. So I've got all these files pulled into Photoshop. You can see they're all separately pulled in. And what we need to do to make this happen is we need to go under File and down here to Scripts. And we'll go to Load Files into Stack. And then we go here to Add Open Files. And you can see it pulls basically everything we have open here into this uh, menu. And we'll click OK. And so over here, we'll see our layers. Each layer is, is made up of these open files. So we've got, you know, it's kind of, it's a neat tool. We've got 
one open document here, which has all, it basically brought everything in for us so we didn't have to drag and drop them all into um, one file. So here we go, and then we go down to timeline. You need timeline open to create a animation. And right here, it says click frame animation. So we click that, it brings up the first frame, which is just the top layer, the layer that you had selected over here. But we need to bring all the rest of these layers over. So we'll go over here in this dialog and click on make frames from layers. So now we see we have eight files open. Now we have eight layers and eight frames. And underneath these frames will tell you the, the time of the sequence here. And zero seconds, obviously, it, it's not going to work. So you can click here. There's some presets, two tenths of a second, half a second, one second. For something like this, for me, I feel like maybe three tenths of a second is the best. So we'll click other and we can type in whatever amount we would like. So I'm going to do three tenths. When you select all these frames, it'll change the uh, time stamp here automatically. So you don't have to go in each one individually. Now what you can do is you can go into each one and you can change this. So if like the last frame is something that you want to pause on, you can go in here and change that to a second or two seconds, whatever um, would work for that animation. So that is an option and I've used that for some with like products and stuff like that to where there's a payoff on the last frame, you can have it pause and um, and it works really nicely for that. But for this, uh, we want it to continually loop every frame to uh, be the same. So let's click this animation here. And I'm gonna zoom in because we will end up cropping into this image. And you can see we have an issue here because he is bouncing all around the frame. It doesn't make it very smooth. It's pretty, you know, it, it distracts from what's going on. I mean, I just, I mainly see him just kind of bouncing around, so it doesn't look natural at all. So let's stop this. We're gonna get rid of this document. And then we're gonna go back and do exactly what we did before. Underneath scripts, we will load files into stack, add open files, and then this time, this will correct the fact that we were not on a tripod and weren't, or we weren't keeping the uh, camera steady. So we click this. What this will do is Photoshop will automatically align him, basically stack him right on top of himself. So we'll lose that jitter that we had in that first animation. So you can see it takes a little extra time as it stacks these. Okay, and here we are. So basically it looks pretty much the same. You can see there's a little extra room around the file and that's because it's moved the um, files around just to stack him on top of himself. So let's go back down here to create frame animation, make frames from layers, select all frames. We'll set our time at three tenths of a second. And we have, here's our looping option. We can do it once, three times or forever. For this, we wanna do it forever and Let's hit play. Now you can see on this one, Photoshop did its job and he's not bouncing around. You can see the frame bouncing around, but not our player. So that makes it you know, really smooth. It's a pretty neat effect. And finding those last two frames where we had him moving the ball back into his right hand helps create that loop that we were looking for. And you could save that. Well, what we'll do is, you know, you would crop in and then you could save this um, as an animated GIF, which would work fine on uh, Twitter. You know, Twitter will handle GIFs. Um, Instagram will not do uh, GIFs or GIFs. So we have to do uh, one other step for Instagram. So now that we have this here, let's crop uh, for an Instagram post, which Let's go up here. We've got uh, we've got our ratio at four by five, which is what the um, Instagram post, normal post, are set at uh, a four by five ratio. Get in a little bit tighter. Let's check this animation. Well, actually, we have to crop first. I think we're good though. Yep. So we work just fine through that crop. Now let's go in here to our image size and we'll size this for Instagram. Now Instagram, uh, the, it's a four by five ratio on a post uh, and you know the pixel 
count as a 1080 width by 1350 height. Since you can uh, pinch and zoom, I like to go around usually twice that amount. Um, so when people pixel peep and zoom in um, to your post, it, it still it maintains the resolution. You don't have any pixelation and that type of They can zoom in and look around, see different detail, you know, see details within the picture. All right, so we'll change that size in there. Let's go to export to save this as a GIF. These days, um, there's not an option right here underneath the file menu. We have to go to export and save for web. And it says Safer Web Legacy. It used to be in there, but now it's in under the uh, Export tab. So this should bring up our dialog. We've got our image size, which is twice the resolution for a normal Instagram post. Um, colors at 256. All right, so we'll save that. We'll save that as Basketball 01 GIF right to the desktop. All right, since Instagram does not support GIF files, we have to convert the GIF to an MP4 for it to work on Instagram on a post or a story. So one of the easiest ways to do this, if you're not gonna do it like in Premiere um, or you know, that type of video um, editing software, you can use these websites. There are a couple different ones, but easygif.com makes it super easy. So what we'll do is we'll go, you'll see it's set to a GIF to MP4 converter. You can do video to GIF. They've got different things uh, you can do here, but to make it work for Instagram, we're just gonna go uh, GIF to MP4 converter. We'll choose our file. And we'll upload that max file size is 35 uh, megabytes. I think we were around 13 or so on our file. So I'm gonna upload that, and then after it uploads, we'll uh, jump back into this. Okay, so our file has been uploaded, and you'll see a button here where it says convert GIF or GIF to MP4. And you can see the output here, and then we'll just go to save. And you can see we've got our MP4 now, which this will work um, perfectly on Instagram. So I figured we'd jump into uh, one more example. This is one of the uh, dunk files. You can see I'm scrolling through the thumbnails here. When I'm photographing these, this is definitely one where I knew that we have potential for a, a cool animation. So while I'm photographing these, I'm zooming out on this example. I'm trying to keep the guys as centrally located within the frame and give to myself enough room around here in case I need to you know, move things around or if I wanna crop in and post, I'll have that. Obviously, I can't crop out. So I'm gonna shoot looser than tighter in that type of, uh, type of case. And I'll just, as we're looking at this example, this type of uh, animation is going to be reliant on the frame rate of your camera. And it'll also be um, reliant on the recycle speed of your strobes. So fortunately, I have uh, some pro photo strobes that can uh, do a really good job of recycling, maybe not all the way full power, but enough to where we're getting uh, a, even enough exposure throughout uh, the animation here. And another cool thing, let me, I'll open these up. When we open these up, we can go into Camera Raw and adjust exposures on each individual frame. So um, this one was, was pretty nice throughout. But if we wanted, say like this first frame where they're just a little bit outside of my uh, strobe, we can go in here and adjust this exposure for that individual frame. And then we can do the same here. And then, and like I said, you can, you can kind of go in here and spend a lot of time matching the exposures up on these frames or making each one ideal which just furthers, when you're working for a client, it's, it's worth the extra time and effort to make sure every single frame kind of gives, you can see that one's probably a little bit hot, so what you can do is come in here, lower that exposure a little bit to match 
what's going on in these other ones. So I'm gonna open this up, open these up, and we'll run back through what we did on that first image just for one more example. All right, so we've got all these files open up. I believe it's around 17 or so files. We're gonna run through that same process that we did uh, for the first example. So we'll go to scripts, uh, load files into stack. Add all of our open files, click OK. This time we don't have to uh, align them. We, did a, we were planning on this uh, from the onset and I did a good job of keeping everything kind of centralized in uh, the camera during the uh, shoot here. And so it's pretty fluid as is. And so we don't need any help from Photoshop to line things up. So we'll go down here to create frame animation again, which gives us that first frame. We gotta go back in here to make frames from layers. Of course, it's got it backwards again. So we'll go click all layers, uh, reverse frames. So now we're running in the correct order, as you can see. And I also went in and uh, quickly, as you saw, quickly adjusted uh, the exposure for these ind individual frames. You can do that again in here with image adjustments. If you see some things that you wanna, uh, wanna change for some of these, these layers, you can go in and, and change the exposure on some of them um, just to make them match uh, and make the uh, exposure more seamless um, throughout the, the whole animation. But for time's sake, I'm not gonna go through and, and do all that on here. Okay, so we've got all these files here. Let's select them. Go in here and change the timestamp to, let's see what two tenths of a second looks like on this one. I think two tenths works on this, this animation. So three tenths might be too, a little too slow. So now that we've got that set, now that we have our animation all set here, let's crop for Instagram, a four by five size here. Let's make sure we, we'll, we'll check it out here. I believe that'll work. Yep. All right, so now that we have the crop, we will go to export. Save for web legacy. Now that we're in the save for web dialog box. Okay, now that we're in the save for web dialog box, we're gonna change our image size to match the uh, Instagram, which would be twice the Instagram resolution. And we will save that. All right, so after we save that one as bball02, and then we use that same website to convert the GIF or GIF to a MP4, and we can upload it to our Instagram profile as an Instagram post. And I can show you right here, it doesn't loop when we do the preview on the computer, but when you put it in on your Instagram, you'll see here that the post will continually loop, which gives us that nice fluid motion over and over and over. And you can see on this one, I've got it alongside two of the portraits um, or the por portrait of each player and then this action sequence. So using this type of animation just really adds a whole nother element to an Instagram post. So I hope you can see how having this skill can really add something extra to your photo shoots and can give you yet another tool in approaching potential clients. Something like this could be brought to the table when you're looking to land a job or you could photograph a sequence during a shoot with it in the back of your mind and then deliver it to your client as a sort of bonus on top of the work they were already expecting. Yet another way to become memorable and hopefully make it onto their short list for future work. Well, I hope some of y'all have found some value here and if, if so, please hit that thumbs up to help tell YouTube we have something cool going on here. Also subscribe and hit the bell notifications so you'll be alerted when I post new content. With the small audience I have here, I wouldn't count on being notified otherwise. You can also always find me on Instagram and Twitter at Quants Photo. Please stay healthy and safe out there, and I plan on being here in the next one. Hopefully, this is the last video I have to make on top of a toolbox. 
I don't know how much more my legs can take. So stay tuned for that and I'm out.